But wait, someone else on the road overhead. Would they help a friend beaten up, left for dead? Oh, look, on his head, not a shoe but a pot. Why, this little guy was from Gibberty Lot. Would he help a Flibian? Certainly not. The boy with the pot saw our friend with the shoe. Oh, look! He exclaimed. He's from Flibberoo. Why, they think we're garbage. They pelt us with shoes. Why should I care if he's beaten and bruised? But out here in the wild, his chances are slim. If I was in need, would I want help from him? He looked at our friend, and he looked at the shoe. And then in his heart, he knew what to do. He may be Flibian, that's plain to see. But God made him special, just like he made me. So we got him unstuck, and he picked up his shoe. And together, they walked back to Flibberoloo, out of the valley and back into town, where he stayed by his side till the doctor was found. Oh, my! Said the doctor. He's wearing a pot. The little one there is from Gibberty Lot. <coughs> you saved this fellow? You pulled him through it? I don't understand. Tell me, why did you do it? He has a shoe and I have a pot But when we look deeper there's more that we've got God made us special and now I can see If you're special to him then you're special to me Maybe it's time to perform a good deed And when you finish you'll find that it's true When you make them feel better You'll feel better too Here, let me help you Thank you Oh, love your name So the boy with the pot gave the doctor some money to pay for the cucumber's bill. And the mayor cried out with his eyes moist and runny. I'm touched by his act of goodwill. If this little guy can take care of his brother, when he lives in one town and he in the other, why can't we all try to help one another? And love will surround our fair hill. Then <laughs> little Dave to the battlefield with some food. <laughs> Now Dave got to King Saul's camp just about the time Goliath was going to come out, so all the Israelites were hiding. Hello? Is anybody here? Shh, he'll hear you. Who? Him, that big pickle over there. Who will fight me? Well, who's gonna fight him? What are you, nuts? He'd have us for lunch. Speaking of which, what'd you bring us? Here you go. Mmm, pizza. Oh, cheese in the crust. That's tremendous. Come on, guys. Have you forgotten? We're the children of God. Okay, that's better. Now, Junior, is there anything you'd like to say to the grapes? Um, like what? Junior's dad explained to him that when someone says they're sorry for hurting you, and they really mean it, we need to forgive them. That way, we all feel better. Oh, I get it. Okay, I forgive you, grapes. <sighs> oh, that's great. All right. Now, doesn't everyone feel better? Oh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Right. yeah. That's right. It's almost time for supper. Come on inside, Junior. Junior? His name is Junior. Oh, that's a funny name. Okay, this is the last straw. Mm. 
Hey, I thought you said you weren't going to tease anymore. Well, that's exactly what we said. And we grapes always try to keep our promises. Well, isn't that right? Sure. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 right. Now, what do you kids have to say to Junior? Oh, oh sorry. I'm real sorry. Really? I'm mighty sorry. Oh, I I'm sorry. Sorry. Potter oh, gains his composure and reports. I think I saw a hairbrush back there. Back there with my hairbrush. Back there with my hairbrush. Back there, back there, oh, where, back there, oh, where, oh, where, back there, back there, back there. Is my hairbrush. Having heard his joyous proclamation, Junior Asparagus enters the scene. Shocked and slightly embarrassed at the sight of Larry in a towel, Junior regains his composure and comments. Why do you need a hairbrush? You don't have any hair! Larry has taken aback. The thought had never occurred to him. No hair? What will this mean? What will become of him? What will become of his hairbrush? Maybe I should just show you. Huh? Close your eyes, Junior, and don't open them until I say so. All right! Okay. Well, how did we get here? We're using our imagination. Oh. <laughs> So these must be the Israelites. Yep. Why aren't they out here in the middle of nowhere? Oh, -ho! now that is a good question. Have you ever heard of a guy named Moses? Hmm, isn't he the one who parted the Red Sea? Right again. But we're going to go back a little further. The Israelites were living in Egypt, but not because they wanted to. No, the Egyptians had taken them captive and were making them work very hard as their slaves. Oh, dear. It was miserable. But God cared about the Israelites, so he sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt and into their own land, the Promised Land. Promised land? No, 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 no. Oh, the land God promised them was wonderful. You could grow things and there was lots of food. No, this is the desert. So why are they here? Ah, yes, that is the point. When Moses and the Israelites left Egypt, all they had to do was follow God's directions and they'd go right to the promised land. But uh, they didn't always follow God's directions. Sometimes they went their own way instead. What do you mean? Well, for example, Moses led them to the Promised Land right away. But when some of the Israelites took a look around, they saw people there that looked like giants. That scared them so much, they wouldn't go in. They got to the land God promised them, and then they turned around and ran away. Now, God was very disappointed in the Israelites for not following his directions, so he told them that none of them could go into the Promised Land for 40 years. You're kidding me. Nope. That's why they're stuck here in the desert. Wow. By the time 40 years had gone by, Moses had died. I thought this story was about him. No, it's about Joshua. Joshua? Who's he? Well, he was Moses' helper. When Moses died, Joshua became Israel's new leader. Do I know you? I'm the narrator. Oh. The Israelites were very sad about Moses dying because he was a great leader. But at last, it was finally time. Huh? <laughs> Drummer boys and little lambs, feast your eyes across the sands, introducing an oasis of entertainment. The greatest showman this side of the Jordan, it's Ben Haramid. So you say you're in the mood for a diversion. Just a song, a laugh, amusement for your pain. Well, my caravan, it brings 
brings a carnival for kings, cashing in from all the crowds of Jerusalem. I've got comics, gymnasts, jugglers, and yours truly. But there's one important something that I lack. It's the newest little drummer boy sensation. Yeah, I'll reel them in, you'll keep them coming back. Kid, you're gold. They'll be sold. They'll be slinging shiny shekels uncontrolled. Every Claudius and Claudette with a buck to spare will spend it at Amazing Little Drummer Boy. A treasure to behold. But all the people. What about them? I would rather be just left all alone. The empty, lonely <laughs> desert is my home. Drumming just for hoofed mammals, for my donkey, sheep, and camel, and remain the little drummer boy unknown. Come on, kid. Let Ben Haramid put you and your friends to work. I don't want to work. You got to have money to eat, to feed your animals. But I don't want to be around those people. I don't want to be around anyone. Of course you don't. You don't have to. Huh? We're going to make a lot of money, Aaron. And once you've got money, you won't have to be around anyone you don't want to be around. I won't have to be around anyone? I just said that. Leave it to me, drummer boy, and you'll never have to deal with people again. Yes, I understand you'd rather be alone now, but your preferences must at the moment bend. Once you wild them on the streets, you'll grab your gold and then retreat to the desert with your little animal friends. Kid, your gold, yeah, they'll be sold, they'll be, be slinging shiny shekels uncontrolled. Every Claudius and Claudette with a buck to spare will spend it an amazing little drummer boy. A treasure to be hold! A treasure to be hold! All right, we'll go. Come on, guys. Maybe we can get something to eat. So Ben Hammerhead tricked Aaron into joining his group? Hammerhead. And yes, Ben was a shifty one. He didn't really plan on sharing his riches with Aaron. What? That's not fair. You know, I'm no expert, but you don't sound very bored to me. Oh, well, you know, there's not really anything else to do. We could go clean the garage. No, I mean, we might as well see what happens next. <laughs> so off they went toward Jerusalem. What do you call the person who hangs out with a bunch of musicians? A drummer! <laughs> uh, oh, I'm just joking. That's what I do. I'm a comedian. I like to make people laugh. Well, I don't laugh. Oh, come on. Everybody likes to laugh. Not me. I can never forgive what happened to my parents. Uh, there's nothing you can do about the past. Uh, can't you just, you know, uh, forgive and forget? I can't forget. Speaking of forgetting, what do you call the guy who forgot to pay his taxes? Bernie! That's me, Bernie. I forgot to pay my taxes. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, don't tell that joke to the Romans. They don't have senses of humor! Okay, you've got Charles Street, Cross Street, Carnaby, and Pudding Lane. That'll take all day. Well, then pack a lunch. Edmund, I can't carry anymore. I need a break. A break? You don't stage the biggest Christmas pageant London has ever seen by taking a break. Edmund, I don't think I can be a sheep. Why not? I think I'm allergic to... <laughs> Cotton balls. Wear a clothespin on your nose. You'll be fine. Oh. How's it going, Edmund? Pretty good, Dad. We're a little behind schedule, but if you could help out, I'm sure we could catch up. Edmund, a Christmas pageant doesn't have to be a huge spectacle, you know. 
The story of Christmas is so simple, so powerful. Sometimes a simple presentation is the best way to let the message shine through. Oh, it's gonna shine all right. I've got about 20 pounds of glitter. Do you think that's enough? Well, I'd love to help, but I've got an errand to run. There's a family across town. They're out of work. They don't have any food for Christmas. I'm taking them some groceries. Oh, Dad, do you have to do it now? The pageant! Isn't as important as helping people in need, Edmund. That's what God did on Christmas. He came to us to help us and to show us how much he loved us. And she shall give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, God with us. I want to show this family the love God showed us. Then I'll be back. All right. But bring more glitter, okay? Oh, by the way, the church committee met, and they decided that you could use the Star of Christmas in your pageant if you're very careful with it. Moyer will put it in the cabinet by the side table for you. Oh, thanks, Dad! This is gonna be great!